Hi guys! Hey, it's Thursday and welcome to this week's Ask the Provider live event. Uh, we're so excited. Just wanted to stop by to share a little bit about what's been going on this week and tackle that question that everybody's asking. Um, but before we get into all that, just want to wish you, hey, happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm sporting the green today. Yes, today I'm an honorary Irish person. <laughs> so I'm going to weave it to the Irish should be. Okay, so actually I'm from Jamaica originally, so that's like a really far stretch. <laughs> but anyway, hope you had a fabulous week. I know I did. A, I did. I had a really, really great week. And as always, we like to tell you a little bit about the network, its inception, how we got to where we are today. Then we're going to go ahead and tackle the Ask the Provider question. And then we'll wrap up with some really great, interesting information. So the network was created, believe it or not, since 2015. And the Residential Home Care Network was with birthed out of um, private home uh, personal care community providers that thought, my, nobody knows we exist, right? And so we wanted everybody to know who we are and what we do. So we all came together and we created this absolutely fabulous network of uh, providers that are serving in a private home setting. And we called ourselves the Residential Home Care Network, which kind of makes sense, right? And so basically what that means is you now have options. Oftentimes you're faced with, I have to place my loved one, but I don't know where. And oftentimes you're in the hospital setting or a rehab setting and you're given alternatives that are maybe not suitable. You want a private home. And so we just wanted to provide a forum that you can go to. And so we created our own website. It's the Residential Home Care Network org. Hi, Tricia. Good to see you. Hi, Vanessa. Thanks for stopping in. And so the Residential Home Care Network org is an amazing website where you can go and actually tour video tour the facilities in question. So we have representation here in Orange County, in Lake County, in Osceola County. And these are uh, men and women that are serving your moms and dads and loved ones in a private home, providing very personalized care, right? If you need to reach us, we have our own email. It's called asktheprovider at gmail.com. And basically, for example, we get questions that are coming in that says, geez, how do I do this? Or what does this mean? And that's why we came up with this live format, because what a really great way to reach you than to come and answer those questions live. And then when this is over in the event that you missed it or you forgot something, guess what? We convert this into a video and we post it on our blog page on the website so you won't miss a beat right so you can ask a provider at gmail you can go to our website and then you can join us here every single thursday and here for 30 minutes not a long time we get to tackle some of the questions that you may have on your heart or on your mind right so what are we we are serving in a private home care setting 16 beds and under is considered residential. Um, there are adult family care home communities, and then there are assisted living communities, both in a private home. So what is the difference, you may ask? Glad you asked. So in a, an assisted living facility, they can go up to 16 beds. Um, in an adult family care home sitting, it's five beds maximum, and you have to live there as the owner provider. So the facility that I own is an adult family care home. I live with my residents. How cool is that? So wouldn't you want to know that someone is really that vested in the care of your loved one? Uh, honestly, my residents, if they cough differently, or they sneeze differently, or they take a tumble, boom, we're right there, Johnny on the spot right? We don't have to wait for rounds, if you will. So I think that's really important for you to know. Uh, we now have three chapters represented for the network, which we're really excited about. We have Orange Seminole, we have uh, Lake County, we have Osceola County, and we are so excited that we're having conversations with folks about maybe starting one in Marion County before the year is out. So if you're listening to this and you're in another county, in Polk County or Volusia County, and you're thinking, hey, we want to get together with other providers, uh, email us at asktheprovider at gmail.com. We are very open to uh, meeting you with you and maybe expanding the network to cover other counties. So we will be excited about that. Now, how can you meet with us? Guess what? 
every single month on the first Thursday. We have our monthly meetings at one senior place. Um, it's usually at 12.30 to 2.30. Members are free, non-members are $10 to cover the cost of lunch. And it's a great place for you to come and meet the providers that are serving in this setting and ask questions of the providers directly so you don't want to miss our meetings, all right? We also have really, really, really great sponsors that support the community of providers that are serving in our private homes. Um, I will say today we're going to talk a little bit about one of them, a Passport for Wellness. Um, but Vitas Healthcare, and I can't say enough about this organization, they have been with us from day one. And when I say with us, they have been so supportive in finding ways for us to meet different community partners. They have been sponsors for our lunches and our dinners. And just really a really great hospice company that goes above and beyond. So if you do not have a hospice um, partner, you're thinking about which one should I go, we would highly recommend Vitas Healthcare um, just by the, the very nature of what they have done for us, not as a network only, but also as providers, because I do have a hospice client in my home. And so they are just in here three times a week providing really, really great supportive care. Um, but today we want to talk about Passport for Wellness. Honestly, it is the only video exercise and activity aging program for seniors. So here's how it works. It's streaming. So we all know activity, right, is important for our seniors. Uh, you don't want to know that your loved one is in a facility and they're just sitting around watching TV, right? So basically what we do, we stream live and the exercises are partnered with countries, travel. So for example, I will put one on that says we're going to go to Germany. And we're touring Germany. They're giving history lessons about Germany. But all the while, we are exercising. So their hands are raised. They're doing exercises. Their knees are coming up. Very low impact. They can sit, do it. They can stand and do it. But here's what's exciting. These ladies have traveled. These gentlemen have traveled. And so if we know someone's from Germany or China or wherever, and we introduce this um, live streaming exercise program, it brings back memories, right? So now we're having great conversations when it's over. Uh, we try to theme it. So like if we're in Hawaii, we'll make sure we have pineapples and macadamia nut ice cream, just saying. Anything that we can do to kind of make it fun and just keep the conversation going. You'd be surprised at the things that we learn that they may not talk about, but that just spurs something in their mind with this really great exercise tool. So if you um, don't have one in your home, it doesn't have to be a company. It's very inexpensive. It's less than $7 a month. Yes, you heard me. Less than $7 a month. And um, you can have it. Go to PassportForWellness.com. And look at the video that they have. They have a fabulous video. And then after that, just call and give them a call and see if that's something that, you know, you'd want to sign up for either your facility or maybe just you have a loved one that you're caring for at home and you just want to introduce something more. Passport for wellness. Don't want to miss that. So as we get ready, we want to talk about today's topic. Oh, my goodness. We, believe it or not. We use the term dementia and Alzheimer's interchangeably. And what I've discovered is families are asking, is it the same? Um, is it different? What is it? I had a loved one that I had to care for up until she passed away in last January. And so firsthand, I experienced walking through that with her. And so I'll share a little bit about that as I go through. But even though the words are used interchangeably most of the time, Dementia is caused by the Alzheimer disease. So we want to make sure that we clarify that, right? Dementia in and of itself is a syndrome. And the term is used to describe sort of a set of symptoms that can include memory loss. It can include uh, difficulty thinking, problem solving. Um, they could have issues with language, that kind of thing. Because dementia is caused by damage to the brain cells. And because Alzheimer's is a disease that destroys the brain, it is one of the most common causes of dementia. Hopefully that makes sense. So Alzheimer's is really the cause of the symptom, okay? 
And although Alzheimer's disease accounts for about, they say, 60 to 70 percent of the causes of dementia, there are other things actually that can cause dementia. And let me just pause here and say I'm by no means the subject matter expert on this. I can just share you what I have learned and what other providers have learned over recent years. But there is an absolutely really, really, really great website um, that if you need to get information and walk through this, it's the Alzheimer's and Dementia Resource Center. And I would highly, highly recommend it. Uh, their website is A-D-R-C-C-A-R-E-S. That's A D R C cares.org really phenomenal website that can help you go through um, getting information that you would need so other things that can cause dementia you have vascular dementia Parkinson's disease can cause dementia there's something called dementia with Lewy bodies there's frontal temporal dementia I mean there's so many things and rather than get really bogged down in the minutia of all these different names um, Go to that website, ARDC Cares, and check it out so that you can become really informed. Um, currently, there is no cure for Alzheimer's. Um, there are drugs and non-drug treatments that fam that's available to families. When you talk to your, um, your medical practitioner, they'll be able to walk you through it. Um, it helps with cognitive and behavioral symptoms. Um, as a provider, it's important for us to know the differences um, when we take on a client to provide care. Um, for example, as I was stating earlier, I had to care for um, my auntie. Um, and that's how I started, got into this business of caring for seniors. Um, because at one time she was perfectly normal. But then the behaviors started to change. And um, now you are being accused of things and you started thinking, okay, she started hiding things and then started forgetting things. And then it escalated to behavioral issues where she was combative. What do you do in a situation like that, right? Uh, many of you may be faced with that. How do you handle it? So step one for me was meeting with our doctor. And it was a medical doctor. And she decided you needed to go see um, a neurologist. And so we took ourselves over to the neurologist be prepared for a lengthy um, testing phase. That took about maybe four or five hours. Now picture this, a senior, she's in her 80s going through this. Uh, not pretty, um, however, but she did it. And at the end, and he diagnosed her with early onset dementia. So believe it or not, I understood it, she understood it, but she would not accept it. In her mind, you have dementia. I don't have dementia. I can remember everything, right? So you're going to go through this period with your family where they're not going to be accepting of the diagnosis because they, in their mind, there's nothing wrong. And you just have to accept that. Um, one of the things I will say in caring for someone with dementia or Alzheimer's, oh, please don't argue. Please don't try to convince them. I had to learn, ask me how I did because I made all the mistakes in the book, right? I had to learn to get into her world. And if her world said today the sky was blue or tomorrow it's striped, I had to agree and get into her world. Anything outside of that becomes aggravating to that particular person, right? Um, did we go on medication management? Yes, we did. We tried medication management. Uh, my understanding is it's supposed to slow the process because there is no cure. Uh, I don't know that it slowed the process. I watched her continue to decline. Um, I watched the behaviors continue to get more aggravated, right? And as a caregiver um, in your shoes, um, it's important to not go it alone. Get help, please, get help. Talk to someone. Not only the doctors, but there are amazing support groups around because caregiver burnout is very real as well as provider burnout is very real. We have to maintain and watch our care team, uh, our staff, to make sure that they're spending enough time in the, in, in, with the, the client, but also time for themselves so that they don't become burnt out dealing with somebody. Um, if you have to listen to someone with their stories, over and over and over that can get pretty taxing right I think you'd agree um, but this is just one of the symptoms 
that we have to deal with and make it fresh. When they say it again, it has to be like, oh my word, really? And be in that space with them. All right. Um, for me, I care for someone um, with dementia now. I also care for someone with Alzheimer's who is not fully present. Right. So I have experience with both. One who is fully present um, but has short-term memory issues. Right. And then one who is not present at all but is in that they they can smile at you, um, they can eat if you help them, but they cannot have a conversation anymore. So that is the extreme, right? Um, but it's amazing the things they, the mind remembers. Because if she coughs, she can still put her hand to her mouth. Isn't that weird? You gotta know, she just innately knows. If she coughs, she should put her hand over her mouth. So it's fascinating to watch. I'm particularly fascinated by it. But there is that difference between someone who has early onset dementia and then someone who has Alzheimer's. The one thing I will say that I learned is to make sure that I involved the families. Um, so if you're a caregiver and it's just you, let's say you're caring for your mom. If you have siblings, if you have cousins, try not to do it by yourself. Involve everybody. Get the whole family involved. It's that important. Right? Because oftentimes the ones that are not involved uh, seem to be making a lot of decisions, not knowing how difficult this is to care for someone in that space. Um, for me, it was so difficult, and it really was, and I'll be transparent. I wanted to pack my pocketbook and leave. I did. Um, I thought to myself, what in the world? But fortunately, I had a really good supportive family, um, so I would share that with them. And they helped me to get through from one day to the next. And then I got a care team in place to distance myself. So I got someone to help me, right? So that I wasn't always in that space every single day. Because it's very difficult. Um, it does not change. I wish I could tell you. Outside of a miracle, and miracles do happen. I believe that. Um, but outside of a miracle, there, the progression of the disease gets, gets more uh, advanced. Some progress very calmly and then some not so much. Okay, I'm just being real. In the case of my auntie, um, she progressed calmly in the early stages, but may I be very honest, towards the end of her life, it was ugly. <laughs> okay, I'm not kidding. She was not a nice lady in the very end, even at the last minutes in the hospital kicking and screaming and carrying on, it wasn't nice. Um, it's a very bad disease. It really is. It's a very hard thing to watch your family or your friends or your loved one disappear before your very eyes. It's not easy. Um, but you can get through it with the right support. You can get through it with the right team in place of, of practitioners, medical practitioners, individuals that can help you, give you the skills to cope. Um, it can be done. Um, don't try to go it alone. If you are working a full-time job and you're dealing with this Alzheimer's dementia situation, uh, you may have to place your loved one. That's what happened to me. I was still working and I had to place them in a memory care unit. It is okay, okay? Um, it's gonna be hard. I remember I, I, I placed her because it was what I had to do because I was still working, but guess what? After I placed her, I went and sat in my car and cried. I knew it was the right decision. Our family knew it was the right decision. But your heart is torn apart when you have to make it. So it's not going to be easy, I promise. Um, but there is light on the other side. Um, it took us about, you know, I placed her. She was mad. She didn't talk to me for about a week. And I would go visit her on a weekly basis. And after about two weeks in that environment and she met a friend and now she was able to talk to me. Now she would communicate with me and in our weekly visits, then it became really awesome because she looked forward to my coming to take her off site and we would go do lunch and we would do fun things together. But in the interim, it was very, very challenging. Um, for her, it was kind of new experience every week because every week I went, she didn't remember where we went the week before. So that was kind of nice because we could pretty much do the same thing and she wouldn't. She wouldn't remember. Um, she always remembered me, though. 
Um, she always remembered me, uh, even to the end. She always remembered me. So I was very grateful for that. I didn't have to go through what I know uh, my clients are going through right now where their mom does not remember them because she's so far gone. So there's just two sides to this whole dementia, Alzheimer thing. I am no expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I, we just wanted to come on as always to kind of share our perspective as you keep asking the questions, um, our perspective about how we handle them in our facilities, in our home, um, if they get to the place where it's going to be so combative that they're going to hurt other residents, then we are going to have to transition them to somewhere that's a little um, larger, where they're not in constant communication with someone. You know, a larger facility might be best in that point, because a, a private home care is not for every single person, right? Particularly someone who is going to be obnoxious and maybe don't even mean anything by it, but because they're not here anymore, they have no filters. And because they have no filters, they will just start, like my auntie would cuss from one end of the house to the next. <laughs> so she was my family, so I couldn't put her out. <laughs> but that, that re hey, listen, the struggle is real. I'm just being honest. But she would cuss me and call me an SOB from one end of the house to the next. And she never cursed when she was in her heyday. So that was so out of character. Um, but believe it or not, if I had that situation in a resident and it was constant and constant, then it's going to affect all the other residents, right? So we would not be able to deal with that. So those are the kinds of things that we deal with um, in our facilities, excuse me, that um, I think is important for you to know. So hopefully I've shed some light on the differences between Alzheimer's and the difference between dementia and how we as providers approach the level of care. Um, in addition to that, I just wanted to go ahead and share with you again about the network for those who are just joining in and may have missed the first part of the talk. My goodness, I, I get on here and before you know it, it's what, 622? Where does the time go? Um, but hopefully you're having as much fun as I am. I enjoy doing these. Um, so the network has been around since 2015, y'all, and we're very excited about our growth. We really want you to come and partner with us, come to our meetings. If you have a business, right, and you think that, hey, I would love to partner, I want to be a sponsor on your website, email me at asktheprovider at gmail. I'll send you a sponsor packet. It's very easy to become a sponsor. Um, if you want to become a community sponsor, it's only $50 a month. Yes, 50 bucks a month. And we'll put your information on our community page on the website. And every time we do a live event, we are talking you up big time. And when I'm out and about doing events, we're talking you up big time. And when we do our meetings, we're talking you up big time. So that's just having your own personal marketing person going out there and saying, hey, use this company, right? So that's one way. Uh, the second way is to be a um, premier sponsor on our website, and that's $250 a month. Now, for $250 a month, you're getting all of the above that I just said, but in addition to that, now we're getting all your collateral, and we are putting it in the facilities that are premier members. So now you have information that's on site that can now be shared with family members that are coming through, those kinds of things. So we just want to, and of course, your information is going to be every single page of our website, right? Once you become a sponsor as well, you attend our lunches for free. So that's just another sweet perk. And of course, you are welcome to come. If you have a table that you want to come and just put out your information, you're welcome to do that. So there are lots of benefits to becoming a sponsor on our network. And as we grow, more and more people exponentially will get to know who you are and the kinds of business that you offer. Um, so hopefully that information has been important to you. Next um, month, I don't know what we're going to be talking about because believe it or not, you drive the conversation. So as the weeks go by, next sorry, next week, as the week go by, I look at the emails and they say, well, what is this or how is this? And it's during that time we sit as a board and we say, okay, you know what? Let's tackle that subject this week, right? So we don't know what's going to be on task for next week, um, Thursday, but we're excited about it. Um, if this is something that you think is really, really meaningful to you, when you see the video on our Facebook page, please share it. Share it with the world because we really want, we are proud of what we do. It is a privilege to take care of the senior community. And for those of us in healthcare, that that's what we do. We do it not for anything but the love of the seniors, right? Um, you can tell the difference between those that love it for the seniors and those just love it for money. 
they're so invested in it you, you can just tell and so when you're out trying to decide where to place your loved one those are the kinds of questions you want to ask you know why did you get into this business and you will find that oftentimes most of the reason why we got into this business is because we were caring for someone of our own and it just touched our hearts deeply and that's why we started to do it so hopefully you guys found the information useful we're right at 625 once again just to wrap up our email is ask the provider at gmail.com our website is residentialhomecarenetwork.org our meeting place is one senior place and we do that the first Thursday of every month at 1230 to 230 and last but not least our ask the provider live events are hosted every single Thursday evening at 6 p.m. like it is today and until then guys my time is up and I thank you for yours have a great weekend